words, Rob, we, the word govern comes from the Greek. It means to steer or guide a ship. And mint is from the Latin word menta or mente, and it is where we get the word mind. So therefore, your governments, by their own admission, are nothing more than tools to steer and guide the mind. And every nation or city or state has some sort of a center place, and they're called capitals. And a capital is nothing more than a center for head counts. The word capital means head count. When you break these words down, you start to understand what they mean. It's the devil's language. The word cap is your head. And ital, at the end of it, is to add, is an itali. And if you t tally something, you add. Therefore, a capital is for your head count. This is where the monsters of this world wish to, wish to keep track of you. This is why they give you a social security card so they can keep tabs on you of who you are. Head count. You'll never think of capitalism the same after hearing that and understanding what it really means. Now, before we go deep into the trucking strike, I have another word for you, and I want you to really think hard about it. Do you really understand what a corporation is and what the name even means? Well, you will today. The word comes from the Latin term corpus, meaning body, as in corpse, a dead body. Now, these words are different, but both represent a body, one dead and the other a body of people. Okay, the word corpse, corp, means a body or group. The word ration, by definition, is a fixed allowance of provisions, goods, food. Therefore, corporations are the body that rations out the goods to you. Do you understand? That's what a corporation is. They are, they are slave masters. And they have control because they determine how much goods are available and what the goods will cost. They want you to be the subservient slave. However, you do have choices and there is a way out of all this nonsense. Now, why is this relevant? Because there is a source that said these evil monsters will play a huge role in this depraved world spinning out of control. And what is the source, you ask? God. God called them the great merchants. Now, I'm not going to preach you a sermon. I'm going to talk to you, talk to you in a language that many of you will certainly understand today. They are merchants, as in merchandise, as in commerce, as in communism, as in living in a great commune. For that, this is where the world, this is where the word communism comes from. Commune. They want you to be all together, herded together like cattle in a commune, so they can enforce communism on you. They are not great because they are good. They are great because they have power. Shall we go further? And hey, thank you to my brothers and sisters who stand by this small but powerful channel of truth. Do you ever wonder where wedding bands come from? You get married, and right after the final I do, the government or corporation sleeps between you and your wife. Now, this corporation now has control over your marriage. They tell you to put circular gold circles on each other's fingers. They even dictate the particular finger. Now, these gold bands are symbolic for the rings around the so-called planet called Saturn, as in Satan, as in the snakes wrapped around the fingers to join the man and the woman to the serpent. Now, I'm not trying to crap on your marriage at all, because we've all made mistakes and we don't know these truths because we're simply not taught them until God says, now is the time for you to learn. I'm simply showing you the lengths these devils will go to to hide and render ownership over your lives. Hey, man, and thank God for the knowledge that you just got. It isn't I. My God is mighty, all right? Now, I'm not done here today. Stay with me. What does this have to do with the Freedom Envoy, the trucker strike in Canada? Everything, or I wouldn't be talking about it. Now, I'm going to show you something wonderful and powerful today, and then I'm going to be taking a little break from the Internet. I have to learn a new program, Windows 10. I'm not very computer savvy at all, and it may take me two to two to three weeks, man. If a man broke into your home and stole all your belongings, you would not hire a best friend to put in your new security system. This is exactly what is going on in the world today. Think about what I just told you. If two men broke in your house tonight, 
and you, you knew who one of them was, but you were kind of suspicious about the second guy. And he came back the next day and said, hey, let me put in your new security system. Would you hire him? This is exactly what people do every single day of their lives. I raised my head and said, may our swords drip with the enemy's blood. I'll speak to you as a man today, always, but I'm going to speak to you in a language that you understand. Because most folks don't seem to understand, man. I have no qualms about doing what's necessary when the time comes, at all. The difference between me and most men is, well, there's a lot of differences between those who believe and those who not, those who do not, but one of the biggest differences is I'm not going to be drawn into something if, if I'm not supposed to be. Does that make sense? I'm not going to be drawn into something if it's not what I'm supposed to be drawn into. For example, if I live in a neighborhood and there are four guys down the road fighting with five other guys across the street. Now, I don't like either group. But I kind of like the first group just a little bit. They're a little bit more easier to tolerate than the other group, right? It's not my place to go mediate or to join a side. Unless I know that one of those groups share my beliefs, my morals, and are of my family. Now, I don't mean my blood family. I mean my family. My family on this earth. If you were in your house or apartment and at 4 a.m. you heard noises and realized your house is surrounded by demonic animals called evil men, what do you do? Well, you have a few options. Do you not? Number one, you can scream, shout, and be filled with fear, bravado, and run outside and be shot, killed, and now your loved ones are left to the mercy of these filthy animals. Number two, you can relax, be calm, and count on your being prepared for this moment. You can move your family to a safe room. You can grab your weapon. Survey the outside from a window. By doing this, you have saved your energy because most energy is consumed by fear. This is why so many men lose fights in the first 10 seconds. I taught my son this from the time I taught him how to defend himself. I told him the biggest thing you have to control is your fear. Because the fear will drain you of all of your energy. Your breathing becomes erratic and before you know it, you have nothing left in the gas tank. Then you quickly become the victim. Most men don't know this. They talk, scream, and shout. They simply don't know because God has neutered them. You relax, even smile, because you know the man above has prepared you for this moment. You watch, wait, and you ready yourself to do what needs being done. By doing this, you have chosen the way the battle will be fought. You have, taken the, you have taken the control out of the evil men and given it to yourself. Fear, anger, and desperation are your enemies more than most of you understand. These emotions must be conquered for these last days and this final push and war against evil. A snake is squeezing you as tight as it can, and it means to take your life or have you submit. Now, I know people are tired of this system sucking every molecule of life from them. I know people are tired of being told they have to be injected with poisons. I know people are tired of seeing jobs, businesses, and more lost. I know people are tired of seeing the price of every damn thing rise out of control. They are tired of this beast. Yet, sadly, most of them have no control or no answer to how to stop it and who is even behind it. Nevertheless, they are tired of it. These folks are looking for anything to make this shit just go away. Because at this point, that's what a lot of folks are saying. Just make this shit go away. You see, we're almost three years in and the people are fed up. The people are tired, man. They are tired of this beast demanding the very air they breathe. And other people in other nations are pulling for Canada. They're hoping that this trucker strike will start a fire of change and revolt that sweeps the nations. I fully understand. We all do. In the 90s, there was a massive surge of concerts, commercials, programs, and more called Rage Against the Machine. Now, it was hosted by MTV, and it had bands and others as they spoke and, and sung about oppression and the tyranny of this nation. Of course, they never asked who and what forces behind this tyranny, and they were never going to discuss a solution except to keep, except to keep the people watching and funding their rage against the machine. Sometimes in life, the answers are right in front of us, and yet we still cannot see it.
The answer was right there for the viewers if they would only look with their other eyes. Yes, their other eyes. As each Rage Against the Machine show, program, and special event went to, went to a commercial, it would reveal the monsters behind the tyranny. But folks just couldn't get it. When they went to commercial, the commercials would say, the sponsors of Rage Against the Machine would like to thank you, the sponsors, and they were DuPont, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Levi's, and all the largest and powerful corporations in the world today. They, they, they laugh at the blindness of the people of this world, because here they were saying, we're the same son of a bitches that are giving you the rage against the machine, and we're the same ones that are causing all the chaos. You see, we're controlling both hands. Both hands. Most folks right now just want life to go back to the way it was before the big lie that we are currently living. Now, they're willing to settle for still being a slave, but just not quite the way we are now. You see, this is the mentality. If you want to be a, a slave at 10%, you might as well go 100% in, man, because you're a slave. Freedom is freedom. You don't bargain. You don't barter with freedom. With that being said, I humbly ask a question to all of you. In the current trucker strike in Canada, who owns the trucks? All the trucks that have been involved in this freedom convoy, simple question, who owns the trucks? Now, some will say, well, the truckers are independent operators out of Ottawa. Stop being so childlike, predictable, and think outside of the box that the beast has put you in. Canada is no different from the United States. 99% or more of truckers work for big or middle to average trucking companies. They work for corporations. There are very few, and even less in the past three years, independent operators in today's world. And only the naive and blind would believe that 50,000 independent operators are in Canada and they have proceeded to have, have a strike. Who owns the products and merchandise that the truckers are hauling? Who signs the paychecks of these truckers? The goods and products in the back of those trucks is owned by corporations. The trucks being used in the show you are watching are owned by the giant corporations of this evil world. The corporations own the government. So who is behind this evil protest? The same son of a bitches that were behind the rage against the machine. Corporations! Now before we go deeper, I have a question for you and the protesters and all the people that support the Canadian trucker strike. And I understand your pain, man. I understand why you're supporting it. Because you're tired. You're tired of all this. I understand your anger. However, why have you not been protesting the chemicals in the air, water, and food? Why not protest the fluoride in baby formula and all the drinking water and food and clothing? It's killing you, man. Why not protest the Monsanto and GMO food that is poisonous as hell? If your persuasion is we're protesting the vaccine because it's deadly and you are correct, then why not protest these other issues which can kill you too, if not just as quick? Why not? Maybe the corporations decided not to stir up as much attention to those issues. See, therefore we have no movement for fluoride, Monsanto, GMO, and chemicals in the air. You see... Does this make any sense to you? You're damn right it does. Therefore, we have a repeat, albeit with much bigger stakes, of Occupy Wall Street. We are changed, the Trump rally, and many other so-called movements, protests, and marches. From BLM, Antifa, to all the rest of these shit shows. They are all by corporations. Some of the most evil, hideous monsters that walk this earth plan these events. It is a media psyop sponsored by these evil entities that we discussed earlier, corporations. Now, we've had many psyop, and especially in the past 25 years. False flags, hoaxes, I mean, it goes on and on and on. 9-11, one of the biggest, 9-11. People to this, to this day still believe that planes actually hit the towers and the Capitol building. They actually believe it. They don't understand it was direct energy weapons. 
those towers were symbolic of pillars. A new world order had come to light or darkness. Then we have the BLM. All of a sudden, black people see white people as the devil, while the real devil is in the background. Do you understand? With a six-pointed star across his head. Then we have the once-a-week stage shootings. Yes, once a week now. 11 times 3 equals 33, and the list goes on and on and on. You can rinse and repeat and do it again. The MAGA movement, straight from the devil, literally straight from the devil, was used by another demon in 1980, Ronald Reagan. It was his slogan, make America great again. America will only be great and was only great when God touched the people and they made it great because of him and for no other reason. No matter, all this is d designed to control the cattle and keep them mooing and godless. One of the biggest and most immoral media psyops in history is the bathroom and gender issue. Let me explain. The second you even debate it, you have lost, you see. You do not debate evil. Why? What purpose would you have to, to debate evil? You stand on the truth and tell evil to eat shit and die. The minute these weak-kneed people actually took the time to explain their position, they opened themselves up to compromise with the devil, and this is just what the devil's children want. They want you to start to bend, bend, and bend, and before you know it, when you bend but so much, what happens? You break. You break. You learn to accept. You learn to go along to get along. This is not what God wants us to do. Media psyops such as space, NASA, moon landings, Mars, and more are some of the grossest and most sinister lies ever forced on, on the masses. Currently, we have been in a three-year psyop, have we not? However, the great psyop really got started back in, in the 1950s with the great changes in this country and our values, morals, and most importantly, the faith of this nation. This, coupled with the advancement of technology, we are seeing the biggest psyop that the world has ever seen when it says that the God's chosen people are the synagogue of Satan. You see, when a people that God has condemned and said you are of the damn devil can all of a sudden say we're God's people and people actually believe it, man, that's a psyop from the bowels of hell, deep from the bowels of hell. I am speaking the truth to you today. Now, to open the video, we talked about fighting, fear, desperation, and being wise. Fear is a spirit, just like love is a spirit. Most people don't understand all these emotions are spirits, and they can be gotten rid of. Desperation comes from no faith. So when you have fear and desperation, these emotions do not produce critical thinking. In fact, it creates just the opposite. People become irrational, illogical, and are easily influenced. The masses flock together in their lies, fear, and illogical behavior. This is called the gang mentality or have mentality. And the synagogue of Satan loves, loves to create this. Have you asked some questions? What do you think this protest is going to do to the military? How about law enforcement? How about the immediate future? How about the system using the protest and convoy? To say COVID is more out of control now because of the massive protest. You see, the snake, the serpent, is playing master chess. And the vast majority of people are playing kindergarten checkers. You see, you can't play checkers when the enemy is playing chess. The moves and results have been long thought out. The banking masters knew this freedom envoy would accomplish exactly what they desired. It would mean more money for them higher prices on goods and services for you, more slavery, bondage, fear, pain, and frustration for those who participate, underline that, in their theater of lies and filth. They are trying to break you mentally and emotionally. There is a way out of this nonsense and lies. Now, in this last segment, let's ask the even bigger question that nobody's asking. Very few men walking this earth have as much desire to fight as I do. It's very personal. It's between me and my God and Jesus Christ. My God has put a deep hatred for the evil of this world, both seen and unseen, in me. This goes back to Genesis 3, 14 and 15, when God said, I will put a hatred between the seed of the woman, which comes from God, and the seed of the serpent, the devil. 
However, my father has tempered this desire for a fight with his enemies with understanding and wisdom. I'd like to share something with you that will give you greater insight to how things work than you've ever known. For in this truth is the key to understanding so much of this world. There is a time to fight, a time to die, a time to relax, a time to wait. There is a time to understand who the enemy is and why things are taking place and if you are supposed to be in this particular fight. Jesus was kidnapped by the Jews. He was kept up all night. Uh, the Jews spit, smacked, punched, and mocked the most important thing that has ever walked this earth, seen or unseen. He was taken to the Jews during the wee hours of the night, and then in the early morning, he was taken to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Now, Pontius Pilate is the governor of this dusty province, and he's trying to get Jesus into a conversation. Jesus is quiet. Now, the Bible says Pontius Pilate was scared of Jesus. He wanted to save Jesus. And just a few nights previously, Pilate's wife had told him, leave this just man alone because she'd had a dream about him. The Jews wanted the Romans to kill Jesus so they could say they weren't responsible. It, it didn't quite work out the way they wanted because the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ is on the Jews' hands. But we have this great exchange and like I said, man, let this stay with you forever because you're going to understand a deep truth here between just this, this short little exchange between the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and Pontius Pilate. This is incredibly compelling and powerful. Tie it around your neck and remember it forever. John 19.10 says, remember, this is Jesus and Pontius Pilate. Then saith Pilate unto Jesus, speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify thee and I have power to release thee? John 19.11, Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Jesus is talking about the Jews. The Jews are responsible for it all. But what did Jesus say there? He said in 19.11, he said that the power that Pontius Pilate has was given from where? Above the Father. Jesus tells Pilate this power that he has come from above, a God Almighty. This is incredibly powerful and reveals so much about the power overall. The power your enemies have is because God allows them to have it and is allowing them through their evil to punish and break those who have denied, mocked, and spit on his truth, Jesus and himself. Have you ever wondered why and what Jesus really meant when he said, For many are called, but few chosen. Now, that doesn't seem very inclusive, does it? That many are called, but hey, only a few are chosen. Why would only a few be chosen with so many called? What did the few chosen do? What would make them special? Well, let's see if we can find a few answers as we bring this home. 1 John 3.22 says this, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in, in, in his sight. John 8, 29, the words of Jesus Christ, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I always do those things that, that please him. Matthew 10, 37, the words of Jesus Christ again, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So in those three verses, we see, Keep his commands, do what is pleasing, love Jesus and the Father above all. Now, if we do this, we are living right and have not a damn thing to fear. This does not mean that you won't make mistakes because we all do. It means you are pleasing God. Now, friends, if you please God, the evil of this world has no place in you ever. And you can tell them to their face, you have no place in me. This is how we overcome the world. Now, earlier, we spoke of marriage, a union, a bond forever. These monsters want you to be married to them. They want you to be the abused bride that jumps every time her husband says jump. They want you to be completely dependent on them for everything in life. Yet we have Jesus teaching us that we are to be his, his bride. You see, because in the end it comes down to choices. You can marry the devil and you, or you can marry Jesus Christ and be a part of his divine family. It comes down to a choice. That's what all of it is. Your life, man, is a choice. A choice. There is no middle ground. Jesus Christ said you are either with me or you are against me. 
It's a choice. And you have to pick one. And every day that you don't pick one, slowly you are giving yourself to the evil of this world by default. Because God is not going to beg you, hey, come love me and do what's right. I want to thank those of you who have reached out to me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for your emails, for your letters. Uh, thank you. It means a lot to me. Thank you for those of you who have not considered uh, supporting our ministry. Please send me an email and do so every three or four months. And for those of you who have reached out to me, I'm not talking to you. Thank you with everything in me. Your, your kindness, your generosity is why I'm going to take a couple of weeks off and try to learn how to do a new, a new program so I can make better videos and put them out faster. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I humbly thank you. Thank you so very much. Now, in closing, some people will say, but Rob, are we supposed to just sit on our asses and just wait and, and do nothing? Man, it's what you've been doing for decades. Why are you ready to fight now? Why are you supporting all these movements now? It's because you are desirous of having your old life back. Again, you don't mind being a slave. You just don't want to be the slave as bad as it is now. You're not protesting. Canada and all these protests, they're not protesting because of love of God. Be real. They are protesting because they are tired of the situation. Now, I will not allow my enemy to lead me into a battle that is not from my Almighty Father. You, me, and we as a nation cannot defeat evil without God. You can have thousands of protests daily all over this earth. And until you as a man or woman acknowledge Jesus as the chosen son of God, give the honor, love, and respect that he deserves, you will be broken and you will lose. Take it any way you like, man. There will be a great fight. This is why I gave the analogy of being in the house and being surrounded. There will be a fight. There will be a great tribulation like this earth has never seen, as spoken by Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 through 22. However, stop putting your hope in men who are going to fail and put your faith in God Almighty. And then if God cho chooses to use men, so be it. He's done it many times before. What these people are doing, they're putting their, their faith in men and denying God. That has never worked, and it never will work. So where are we in the last day's calendar? Folks, I'm not a prophet. I don't claim to be. In fact, I don't claim to know a lot about the Bible. I know what God shows me. I don't claim to have all kinds of answers. I don't know a whole lot, man. I only know what God gives me. And when he gives it to me, I don't think it's right. I know it's right. My spirit says that we are in the final hour. But how long will that spiritual, spiritual hour be? Only the Father knows. We will watch we will pray and we will wake up every day and give it all to our Father and Jesus Christ. And they will let us know. See, listen to me, man. You will know when the time has come to go further and face down whatever obstacle that you have to. If that means a Bible in one hand and sword in the other, then let it be so. Let us fight with the Spirit of God and may our swords drip with the enemy's blood. However, let everything that we do in life be with the blessing of our Almighty Father. I leave you with a few words from your Father. The Lord is good. Nahum 1.7 says this, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he that knoweth them, that trust in him. Let me repeat that. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them, that trust him. The Father knows those that trust him, that put him first. God knows everything, man. There's nothing that's going on that God does not know about. Psalm 118.8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men and man. And that's what most people do. They put their confidence in people. They put their confidence in governments, corporations, doctors. They put their confidence in everything but who? God. We live, breathe, and follow Jesus Christ because this is what our Father told us to do. And nothing will separate us or alter this course that he has charted for us. We are his. And this life is almost done. We are living in some of the greatest times ever in history that was prophesied thousands of years ago. But we are, we are also living in a time that was also prophesied to be some of the most evil. Like Jesus Christ said, the greatest tribulation ever. But we belong to the Almighty Father. We belong to Jesus Christ. We are His. And 
the life to come is everlasting. Don't be fearful, don't worry, and don't get caught up in this world. If you want to get caught up in something, man, get caught up in Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm good.